Chapter 1, Introduction to the Deadly Game. The story begins with an ordinary man named Ji Hun, who finds himself struggling with financial hardships and desperation. It was his daughter's birthday, and Song's mother gave him some money to take his daughter out for dinner. But Song needed more money, so he made a bad decision. He stole his mother's ATM card and took all her money. Thinking he could make some quick cash, Song decided to bet the stolen money on horse racing. To his surprise, he won 4 million. Feeling lucky, Song took out a loan from a company, but little did he know that this would lead to trouble. Some people came after him, kidnapped him, and beat him up. When they searched his pockets for the money, they found nothing. Song realized that the girl he had bumped into earlier had taken. Afterward, he rushed to catch a train but missed it. As he sat there feeling disappointed, a stranger approached him. This mysterious man offered Song a chance to play a game. If he won, he would receive a large sum of money. Tempted by the promise of wealth, Song agreed to participate. Despite enduring a lot of pain and suffering, Song managed to win the game and received a significant amount of money. The unknown person gave him a card and told him to contact the number if he wanted to earn even more. When Song returned home, he learned that his daughter would be moving to the US with her stepfather. This news saddened him deeply, and he realized he needed a lot of money to fight for custody. Curiosity got the better of Song, and he called the number on the card. He was picked up in a car and found himself with 456 other people in a mysterious facility. They were all players, wearing uniforms, and being observed by a man known as the frontman. These players, including Song, were burdened with heavy debts. As Song navigated this strange new world, he met an old man who was player number one. The old man had a brain tumor and didn't have much time left to live. There was also a girl named Sae Bayuk, who Song recognized as the one who had stolen his money. He confronted her about it, but before they could resolve the issue, guards arrived in pink uniforms. The guards informed the players that they had to participate in six games. The winner would receive a large sum of money. They were all made to sign a contract, which stated that no player could skip the game voluntarily. Those who couldn't play would be eliminated. The meaning of eliminate would become clear later. With the rules set, the players were taken to begin the games. In the midst of this chaos, Song was shocked to see his old classmate Sang Wu, who had left the country for business. The reunion added another layer of complexity to Song's journey. Chapter 2, Childhood Games Turn Deadly. As the game begins, once the players entered the facility, they found themselves faced with a massive doll for the first game. The rules seemed simple enough, when the doll sang, they had to move forward, and when it stopped singing, they had to stop. However, they soon realized the seriousness of the game when a boy made a wrong move and was shot. The true meaning of eliminate became painfully clear, sending shockwaves of fear through the remaining players. Despite their terror, the survivors managed to complete the game, but not without losing a significant number of players along the way. Out of the original 456, only 255 were left standing. The traumatized players were now hesitant to continue playing, and according to the third rule, they could choose to skip the games if the majority agreed. The frontman conducted a voting process, revealing the prize money of 45 billion ones. However, if they chose to leave, the money would go to the families of the deceased players. In a surprising turn of events, the majority decided to leave the game for now, with the option to rejoin later. The players were allowed to return to their homes, but their respite was short-lived. Song, the protagonist, tried to seek help from the police, but they dismissed his claims as insanity. Meanwhile, Song's classmate, Sang Wu, revealed his own financial troubles, having accumulated a debt of 6 billion ones by investing clients' money in the stock market. As if matters couldn't get worse, Song received a call from the hospital, informing him of his mother's worsening condition. To save her, they would have to amputate her foot, a costly procedure. Desperate for money, Song turned to his estranged wife, who refused to help him. In a moment of desperation, Song's friend got into a fight with his boss resulting in the boss injuring his hand and the friend escaping with some money. With nowhere left to turn, Song's friend urged his wife to leave the country immediately. Meanwhile, Sae Bayuk, the girl who had stolen Song's money, met with an agent to arrange the relocation of her mother. She had promised her older brother that she would bring their mother to safety. However, things took a dark turn when the officer investigating her brother's disappearance found a card similar to the one Song had in his possession. Song, finding the card again, made the fateful decision to rejoin the game. The players were transported to an island on a ship, with the officer hot on their trail. In a daring move, the officer subdued a guard and infiltrated the facility. 
Meanwhile, SAE Biop discovered suspicious activities in the facility, including guards cooking something in huge pots. The players were gathered in a playground, where they were presented with four shapes and instructed to choose one. Sangwoo, having figured out the nature of the game, advised the group to select different shapes. They were then given small pots with shapes inside, and their task was to remove the shapes without damaging. However, if the shape turned out to be a deadly D shape, the player would be eliminated. In the midst of panic and desperation, Sangwoo managed to succeed in the game, while Song's condition worsened. Yet, through sheer determination, Song miraculously emerged victorious. The players were then taken back to their rooms, with only 108 players remaining out of the initial 456. Chapter 3 uncovering the secrets. After having their meal, tensions rise when Jiang gets into a fight with another player and ends up killing him on the spot. Unbeknownst to the frontman, there is a doctor among the players who secretly sells organs of the deceased to the Chinese, with the assistance of the guards. To ensure his survival, the guards provide the doctor with information about the games and discreetly dispose of the bodies. The guards manipulate the food rations, intentionally giving the players less to instigate fights and eliminate weaker contestants. They also inform the doctor about the upcoming game. Sangwoo, suspecting that Song's team might act recklessly, warns his team to stay calm. The doctor joins Jiang's team and shares details about the next game. When the lights go off, Jiang's team, with the doctor's assistance, violently attacks the other players. Jiang targets SAE Biok, but Song intervenes to save her. The guards arrive, resulting in the elimination of more players, leaving only 80 remaining. The players are then taken to the third game, where they are instructed to form teams of 10. Jiang, aware of the game's nature, intentionally excludes SAE Biok's friend from his team, assembling a team consisting only of males. Sangwoo forms a team but realizes they need an additional player, so SAE Biok's friend joins them. The third game turns out to be a tug-of-war. Jiang's team easily wins, and then it is Sangwoo's team's turn. One of the players, an old man, shares his experience and guides the team on how to win. Through their collective efforts, Sangwoo's team manages to secure a victory. With the lights set to go off again in 30 minutes, Sangwoo instructs the team to prepare. They decide to take turns standing guard. Jiang grows concerned that his team might betray him, as they are composed of strategic players. Meanwhile, the doctor and guards continue harvesting organs from the deceased. Guards numbered 28 and 29 are assigned to deliver the organs. During their conversation, the officer disguised as guard number 29 overhears them mentioning a person with one kidney, referred to as a zombie. Suspicious, the officer realizes they are discussing his brother, who also has one kidney. As guards 28 and 29 move to deliver the organs, the officer notices a bomb in the tunnel. Guard number 28 informs him that the place will be blown up when they leave. The officer tries to gather more information, but guard 28 becomes suspicious and demands to see his face. In a tense moment, the officer points his gun at guard 29, questioning him about the zombie person. Guard 28 reveals that the zombie was a girl and offers to share all the information on their way to the leader's room, where there is data on everyone. However, the officer kills guard 28 upon learning this. Meanwhile, the doctor interrogates a guard about the next game but discovers that even the guards are unaware of it. Enraged, the doctor fights the guard and manages to escape after killing him. A guard gives chase, leading them to a playground. As the guard is about to eliminate the doctor, the leader appears and kills both the guard and the doctor. During his exploration, the officer discovers the body of guard 28, realizing that someone else is inside the facility. He eventually reaches the leader's room and finds records, including the list of winners. To his shock, he finds his brother's name on the list, indicating that his brother was a previous winner. The players are then taken for the fourth game. Chapter 4, the players are instructed to choose their partners for the next game. SAE Biok's female friend tries to find a partner, but no one is willing to team up with her. Each player is given 10 marbles, and the objective of the game is to take all the marbles from their partner without using force. If one player loses all their marbles, they are eliminated. Sangwoo and Song's friend engage in a game of guessing odd or even with the number of marbles in their hands. Song's friend wins all of Sangwoo's marbles, leaving him with only one marble remaining for the final round. Sensing his impending elimination, Sangwoo tricks Song's friend by swapping the marbles and gives them to the guard before leaving. Song's friend realizes the marbles are actually stones when he checks them. Player number one, the old man, is in a desperate state. Song convinces him to play, and they also participate in the odd or even game. 
the old man wins all of Song's marbles, but in the last round, he forgets which option he chose, allowing Song to take his marbles while tricking him. However, the old man had anticipated Sang Wu's trick and kept a marble hidden. He reveals that he knew about the cheating but pretended to be a fool. Touched by his strategy, Song returns all the marbles to the old man. Sae Bayak and her friend also play a game where they throw marbles near a wall. Sae Bayak throws her marbles first, and when it's her friend's turn, her friend throws all of her marbles. Sae Bayak asks her friend to throw again, but her friend explains that she is alone and there is no one behind her to support her. Despite Sae Bayok's warning, her friend is eliminated, and their bodies are removed from the area. Jang notices that Sae Bayok's friend is still alive and sitting calmly. It is revealed that Sae Bayok's friend was also friends with Jang, and their clash was a result of bullying from Jang's friend. Later, the frontman discovers the officer's ID card near a dead body, indicating the officer's presence among the players. The frontman prepares to receive VIPs who have arrived at the facility. The VIPs are taken to their rooms, and the frontman informs another important character about their arrival. The next day, the players are brought for the fifth game, where numbers from 1 to 16 are displayed. Each player chooses a number, determining their order in the game. Only the first and last numbers, 1 and 16, remain. Song is unsure which number to choose, as selecting the first number could be disadvantageous, while selecting the last number might result in not getting a turn. Suddenly, a man arrives and requests the first number because he has never been the first in his life. The players are taken to a gaming room where they face a challenge of crossing a bridge within a specific time limit. Two glasses are placed on the bridge, one ordinary and the other tempered. Stepping on the ordinary glass causes it to break, leading to a fall. The game begins, and players are eliminated one by one. Jang hesitates to move forward, but his friend who used to bully him confronts him, holding onto him and jumping off the bridge, resulting in both of their eliminations. There is a man among the players who used to work in a glass company and can differentiate between ordinary and tempered glass. The frontman turns off the lights to prevent the players from identifying. Sang Wu, in a desperate attempt to save time, pushes the man who can differentiate between the glasses. As a result, Sang Wu, Song, and Sae Bayak manage to cross the bridge. However, they sustain injuries due to the broken glass, and Sae Bayak is particularly hurt. Meanwhile, the officer takes the place of a servant by eliminating him. Chapter 5, The Final Showdown A Vip becomes suspicious of the officer and demands that he remove his mask. The officer agrees, but he insists on removing his mask before entering a certain location. Once inside, the officer causes the VIP to faint, and the frontman becomes aware of the situation. The frontman gives chase and eventually confronts the officer, but the officer manages to escape to an island. The frontman follows the officer and catches up with him on the island. The officer attempts to call for help, but the call is disconnected due to a lack of network coverage. Despite trying to send evidence, the officer realizes there is no signal. The frontman apprehends the officer and tries to take him along, but the officer shoots the frontman. When the frontman removes his mask, the officer recognizes him as his brother and shoots him. The officer falls into the water. Sae Bayak is injured from the glass and bleeding. The survivors are taken to a dinner where a knife is placed nearby, indicating that someone among them will kill another person during the night. Song notices Sae Bayok's worsening condition and promises to defeat Sang Wu, take the money, and care for both families. However, when Song goes to seek help, he returns to find that Sang Wu has killed Sae Bayok. The next day, they are taken for the final game, called the Squid Game, where the objective is to die to be dead. A massive fight ensues among the remaining players. Eventually, Sang Wu's condition deteriorates, and Song asks him to stop the game. Sang Wu chooses to end his own life, allowing Song to win the game. The frontman commends Song on his performance, but Song discovers that all his money has been transferred. Song returns home to find his mother has passed away. A year later, Song is in a deteriorated state and using drugs. He has yet to spend the money. A flower seller gives him the same card with an address on it, leading him to the old man, player number one. The old man reveals that he orchestrated the games for his client's entertainment and explains that no one was forced to participate. Song learns that the money he has belongs to the old man, who then dies. Song visits Sae Bayok's older brother and leaves him with Sang Wu's mother, along with a bag of money, asking her to take care of the child. Song then heads to the train station where he encounters the same mysterious person he met at the beginning of the movie. Song gives chase, but the person manages to escape. 
Soane calls the card number and demands answers about why they are tampering with people's lives. The response he receives is to get on a plane if he wants to live. The story concludes with these events.